take a look at this Senha Segura. Take a look at this. It's a Python here. You can bypass the how the tool works. For example, you can do Python, you're running, okay? And if you go to click enter here, so they change here, you see? Oh, change. Change the color, you know? Yeah. And I will put in here percent PDF.1.1. Save again. Continue to be a Python based on the station. But if I do, for example, PDF ID, Senha Segura, they are running like a PDF, see? Because of the magic number. If I try to put in, for example, Python, syntax here for because it works. Hey everyone, Yaniv Hoffman here, back with another video. And for this one, I'm super excited because we are trying to coordinate it for so long a uh, time. And I'm at the pleasure to host today, Filippi, which is a senior uh, researcher. And actually we'll do an hands-on uh, talk about concept, uh, tools and techniques to analyze, investigate malware. So it's not only a talk, it's also a, a demo, file manipulation and full life cycle of uh, the investigation. And with that said, welcome, Filippi. So let me introduce myself again. So I'm a security researcher at Senya Segura. So I mentioned about my uh, my uh, main rule it does in this company. I'm uh, one of the founders of the and advisor of this company, Black and White Technology. It's a company uh, in Brazil and here in Portugal. We are a consulting company responsible for providing different, you know, security services like a penetration testing, DevSecOps training, application security, consulting, different, you know, uh, uh, services inside of the cybersecurity. I'm part of a uh, very active in different uh, communities. One of the more important for me is that hacking is not a crime. It is a kind of um, misconcept about the hacking, usually the newspaper or, or TV using a bad way. Because hacking, it's a lifestyle, you know, how you can see the vulnerabilities, how you can, you know, figure out a different way, how you can use in the creative mind to discover vulnerabilities and how you can report this to the company or, or you know, organizations or, you know, uh, security vendors, how you can help in them to provide security solutions. I'm yeah. ambassador of the SNIC, the open source uh, part. And uh, is a you know SaaS solution is a is a, 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 a analysis um, a statistical analysis code actually. I'm one of the ambassador and uh, one of the leads. I'm one of the leads of the DevCon groups in São Paulo. It's a community you know to share knowledge. Man. And I'm very uh, one of the speakers of the Red Team Village. And this year I'm uh, participating. You know, may, doing you know uh, four workshops and uh, uh, on DevCon it was a super amazing. Uh, opportunity and not only this but if you'd like to write some articles for example for for the, those at uh, three magazine here in Europe uh, I'm one of those reviewers of the those three nice. magazine and the writer in the a structure I have two courses there one is about the ready team for red uh, red team for windows and another is a malware attack with the cute chain methodology okay so that's me basically i like to mention about that it's like to take a print screen because i usually <laughs> i share this information with my mother because it sounds my this the her son is very important she doesn't speak in english but she likes you know and okay. that's it oh. hope she see the video and we'll do also a subtitle so she will understand <laughs> well, <impressive. laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Usually, I share the video with the, with her, and uh, she yeah. always mentioned with me, "Oh, my son, it's so beautiful, but I don't <laughs> understand anything that you are talking." About. Okay, my problem. Cool. 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 Yeah. Okay, Great. let's talk about this uh, theoretical part of this conversation. So, uh, because uh, it's important to put every people in the same page. So, first of all, this what is a threat? Basically, it's a super simple definition about this ISO. It's not definition from Philippe. It's this. Uh, this definition is from this eyes, so it's a potential. This is a, the key here. Mm -hmm. It's a potential cause of the incident. That's the idea. What kind of, Philip? Basically, it's a software attack. Maybe it's a theft of intellectual property. Identity theft is a sabotage or information distortion like a ransomware when someone installs some predations and encrypted this information and request a payment is a kind of information distortion. This is a simple definition. What is a threat? Because... When you perform some analysis, you don't know if it's malicious or not. We just have a simple on an artifact. So we need to figure out if it is a really a threat. Because of that, it's important to understand what is a threat. Okay, so when you do some uh, uh, specific analysis, usually we have this first part, the artifact, the sample. You don't know if it's malicious or not. 
but it, you need to have you have this identification step. If is for example malware is a crime of the malicious the software or maldoc is a malicious document. Okay, so when you receive this, like for example, uh, if you work your a defensive side, like a blue team, for example, or a support team, whatever the, the size of your company, it depends on the team that you work, but if, when you need to perform some investigation, when you receive this, you need to perform some specific, you need to use a specific methodology. So you need to choose what the best, like a statistic analysis or dynamic analysis. Maybe you are thinking, Philip, where is the reverse engineering or reversing, uh, reversing uh, engineer of the malware or where is the, uh, uh, how I can see the assembly? is a technique that you can apply in both methodology, okay? This is a part, the reverse engineer is a part of the both methodology, even mm -hmm. in statistical analysis or dynamic analysis. So when you perform some specifically task about that or activities, so my suggestion to you is always writing something because after that, you can produce a report for your manager, not only produce for your manager, but you learn about the all those steps, those are super important. And not only this, but usually when I do something like this, when I need to do something, I I decide, I prefer to write in, in an article mode because if it's possible to publish this in, in, a, in a magazine, it, it will be important for your career. You can help in your career. Of course, when you respect the disclosure part, or, you know, when you have sensitive data, you cannot ex uh, expose this information. Okay, but when you write this, you can understand what is the step or what is the technique using for the attacker. It's a mm -hmm. super, super nice. And you can improve defenses mechanism in your organization. You can understand what kind of technique the attacker using to bypass your solution, for example. And you can help in the team to creating a cyber threat intelligence, other beautiful word that the cybersecurity like the, the cybersecurity guys like to use. It's not a buzzword because it's important to create this threat intelligence because you can work in more a pro uh, proactive way, let's say. And not only this, but you can be the strengthening cyber resilience against this threat. It's a simple, simple flow, guys, about the, you know, how you can perform or how you can do. But okay, Philippe, I don't know what is exactly statistical analysis or dynamic analysis. I, how right. I can go there deeply. So statistical analysis is simple like this. It's usually the first step about the moral analysis. It's the first part when you do some studies. Why? Because statistical analysis usually describes the process. It means mm -hmm. that you receive the code or you receive the program. You can understand the whole structure. If inside of this structure, what kind of uh, library or inside of the binary you have, what kind of a function is important for these specifically functions? So you, you understand the whole uh, information. For example, when you receive some VBS script, for example, when you receive some Python script, when you receive some Go, or actually Go is compiled, but you know when you receive some code, the program code, you can analyze, you can see the whole steps, the whole part of the 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 the, the, the information. The program itself is doesn't run at this time because of that. It usually is more safely to work because you don't execute itself the malware. On the yeah. other hand, you have the dynamic analysis, okay? In this case, it's more based on behavior. It means that you pick up this malware like this, for example, this is my malware, okay? It's not a malware, exactly. it's not a joke, yeah. okay? But you pick up this malware and yeah, because it's a brand, okay? You know, uh, that's, it's a, let's suppose that this is a malware. This is a simple, like a, 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 an artifact or a sample that I will put in a specific environment and then you run this and this is the is dynamic analysis okay of course you can use in different tools to help you to bring the information one of these co uh, concept is called sandbox the sandbox is a kind of environment that you're putting this specific sample inside of this and then you run inside of this but it's not exactly a simple virtual machine because usually when you talk about the malware uh, studies usually you you it's important to using virtual machine to do some comments and to do some read uh, you know answers about the comments to read information but when you would you like to have the really sandbox not only the virtual machine but you need to have the engine inside of this virtual machine why i need to have the engine philip because this bunch of this engines inside of this 
virtual machine will be responsible for bringing you the information about this sample, if it's malicious or not. Mm -hmm. Because it's just a simple virtual machine. It's just a simple virtual machine. Sandbox, when you're thinking about the malware analysis, you need to have the engines, like a Virus Toto, for example. Virus Toto is an antivirus scanning online. You can pick up the malware again or the sample, put in the side of the, the Virus Toto. Inside of the Virus Toto, we have many engines providing from the security vendors. These engines will be responsible for bringing this information is malicious or not. That's the key. Okay, nice. So let's talk about the file manipulation now. This is a more technical part, okay? So let me go to the My Virtual Machine. I like this, okay? So I think you can see My Virtual Machine here. I don't know if this is, is too big or not. Let me clean here. LS to, to, to list the whole information that I have, the simple common to list all information I have here. I have many uh, files here and folders. So what kind of command, maybe usually I ask it when I do some talks or conversations, what kind of command I can do to uh, uh, finding or to discover what is exactly the file type? Uh, it's, I know that is a stupid question, but if you don't know, or if you know it's stupid, but if you don't know, I can use the file command, okay? Because file, I can type file, for example, and click enter. As you can see, this is the tools or command that I can use to bring the information what kind of file is. So if I read, for example, the manual, by the way, I don't like to read the manual, but it's important for our, uh, you know, field. And if you read the manual, file determine the file type. So we need to discover, remember the first step of the identification. So we perform this specific command, call it file type. And the file type, we will perform some command inside of the virtual machine to figure out what is the file type. Not only this, but again, so let me go for this specifically, senasegura.txt, okay? So if I type file again, and I set here, senasegura.txt, and I type enter, take a look at this. This is a ASCII text, is a simple text file, okay? Okay, if I use another cut to read the content inside of this, and I, you see, take a look what, appears for us, what is this specifically? This, what kind of text is this? Again, it's another stupid, you know, Python script, okay? It's a simple, like, you know, print. Right. Uh, you print the information, okay? It's a Python. It's a super simple Python, that one, uh, 3.11, and I put in saying a segura here, doc text, and running, it's a Python script, simple like this, okay? And if you see here, the extension is a doc text, Okay, right. so that means is not exactly doc Python, but right. content is a text file. On the other hand, not on the other hand, but if you see here, Python is a really a text file. You know, is a is a text. It's not a text file. It's a text inside of the content. But I, I could, for example, change the extension. But let me manipulate. Let me manipulate something here. I like to use, you know, uh, Nano and I will click enter here, I can change something here, for example, in the beginning of the file. So let's suppose that I put here, for example, percent PDF dash one doc, whatever that, for example, eight, I you save, as you can see here, I click yes, and I will click enter. So now if you read again the file, take a look at this, I put these information in the beginning of the file. That's correct, that's correct, okay. So if I try, to execute once again, for example, our Python. Take a look what happened now. Something happened here, okay? Is the text, the syntax is wrong, okay? Okay, Philip. if I type file again here, take a look what happened now. Wow, uh, now no. Change the type, yeah. Yeah, so you know how file, type of file command, the file command are looking for something inside of this specifically file. And something changing here because now the file type is not text file or like a Python, is a, a PDF document, okay? So let me change once again, just to be clear this, I will cut here again. And let me pull 
three double quotes. And I click save, as you can see below, and I click yes, and I click enter, just to confirm to you. Three double quotes, that's correct? Yes. That's correct. Let me put in file again, and let me return here. Remember, here is what? PDF, right? Right. Before was a text. Crawl, cross your fingers and let's see what happened now. Enter. We have I a text. Script. Script. So, if, if it's by the script, I can try, right? To execute, yeah. But the syntax error again undetermined triple quote string right. literally. Something that happened here. What happened here? That's the key. Because of that is important to read the manual. Mm -hmm. If you go below in the entire manual, we can see here the magic is not the magic. But mm. this file have magic a thumbnail. magic number is stored in the particular place near the beginning of the file. This is the magic, not exactly the magic, but it's a magic number. It means that the mm. file command, you know, the tool, using a specifically database that's here, mm -hmm. compile it, as you can see, inside of the this environment based on this database there you check what is the ex exactly the file type okay and not only this but i let me see here okay yeah i download the whole magic directory the, the whole database of the file i have here the whole database as you can see i download it to be easy for, our, for us, for example. So if I read, for example, the Python, the Python, no, the PDF. Here is the whole strings or specifically magic number used in the beginning of the files, as you can right. see here. So based on this information, the file check if the file is what kind of file type it is. So yeah. if I read Python here, for example, take a look at this. Probably the the many people here already saw this information here, where right? is the bin bash, the bin python here, right? When right. you're putting this specifically USR, USR, bin python, like it, for example, bin bash and others. So yeah. if you put this information in the beginning of the file, they will try to execute the Python and they will perform it in a correct way. But if, if you go to the beginning, take a look at this. If you put this three double quotes to the four order of message. So take a look at this string. You see, I put in three double quotes, remember? Right. That's the key here. So, that, so that's telling him that it's a binary executable file. And, and Felipe, for, for newcomers, why this is important, what you, you showed now? Yeah, it's important because, for example, nowadays, when the people are starting to learn about the cybersecurity, they like to go to the, you know, some channels like YouTube channels, or whatever channel, or Twitch or other uh, channel like this. And they like to put in, for example, how I can um, collect credentials mm. on the Wi-Fi from my neighbor, for example, my neighborhood. <laughs> and they will saw a step by step. Right. They they will perform in the same case using, for example, Kali Linux or Perot OS or whatever. But when you do some question like what is exactly was that mean handshake in the Wi-Fi connection, for example? They right. know what that means. Like the question when you talk about the more analysis, what is the magic number? So I don't know what is mag magic number. I know that I can use, I should use in file, for example, to perform what is the file type. But the magic number is important because the attacker can manipulate the magic number. Because of that, it's important to understand the basis of the, the, the information, the base of the, you know, 
the the structure of the, for example, the PE, because if I go, for example, this is the, the, the bunch of the database. I have here the ELF, for example. ELF is a binary for Unix platform. They using the main information for the magic number, you know, to, to here you can read the information used by, you know, the file type to, to see if it's a, a, a ELF or not, you know. For example, yeah. I have here, let me return here to the beginning. In the files here, let me go to the CD Linux. I have here, for example, if I put in file, whatever, for example, as you can see here, this is, is a elf, is a, P, is, a, is a executable, right? Because yeah. when you when I made this command, they read the binary, a, based on the database and the information that you can see here, Okay, uh, it's an L file, but I can manipulate the name of the file. For mm -hmm. example, if I return here and I, for example, Senha Segura, I can put, for example, Senha Segura doc PDF. Okay, and if I return here, I change I change the extension. Okay, yeah. Let me read the content. Is mm -hmm. uh, Python. If I put in yes. here, for example, here, it's a Python, yeah. it's a Python script. Okay. Yes. Not only this, but let me just clarify this. I will cut here and I will now I will put in here the, the magic number of the Python. The Python, no, sorry, the PDF. I will save here and I will file saying Segura. Okay, it's a PDF. So I'm using now another tool called PDF ID. Okay, I don't know if PDF ID has some manual. No, no has a manual, but they have a help here to clarify this. Basically, is a specifically two created from DDA Stevens. Okay, they can be a single file, several files, different files. They try to find this very specifically strings inside of the PDF because mm -hmm. PDF is a document, is a cont, is a is a text file. Um, with a shiny, uh, with a some some uh, you know shiny things inside of this. This is a simple definition about PDF. Okay, <laughs> so if you're using PDF ID to see some strings information about that, take a look at this. Then you try to figure out some informations, and as you can see here, we cannot see any content inside of this information. Right. If I use PDF ID again for another malicious, like a resume here, it's another malicious PDF. They have a content here. Yeah. I don't know if it's malicious or not. I know this is a malware, but you don't know if it's a malware. You don't right. know if what kind of content is malicious, but right. just to show you that the PDF ID is a tool that you can use in, for example, to check uh, malicious, uh, malicious no, PDF documents, okay? Like a view, for example. I will share more, uh, uh, after some other information. But let me return the our main document here. So this extension is doc PDF. Okay. So if I cut once again here and I will save and I use PDF ID. PDF ID to check this. Take a look what happened now. Based on these tools. Yeah, okay. I look. Oh, not a PDF document. Not not a PDF document, but the extension is a PDF. Right. Hmm. You see why is important the magic. I understand what not only what is the magic number because the magic number is one of the part important about the structure, but understand how the magic number works and the whole structure inside of the each file. I can be using some tools, and this in and these tools, for example, can bring this information. For example. I can perform on these tools. I can using this tool as a this command. Let's, as you can see here, and I'm seeing that is not a PDF yet. I can see that is a Python script. So if yeah. I put in here Python, 3.11, and I set it. Running. Yeah. Running. Yeah. But the station is not a Python, but it's running because it's, it's based on the magic number. But you know how the attacker can manipulate something in the file so mm. they can do more confusing from the 
security perspective because you are seeing the let me go just to see here for example malware bypass yeah. different security mechanisms and uh, exactly that's how we exactly. can hide it better exactly so if you go for example take a look at this in asegura take a look at this uh picture okay you see it's a python here and yes here is is another here is a text file so yeah. if you changing the 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 extension so you can not bypass but you can you can bypass the how the tool works for example saying a saying a good dog python i will change for python now yeah yeah and now we can do python you're running okay and if you go to click enter here so they change here you see oh, changed yeah to python change to python and uh, I, I this is another crazy thing now so let me go to this <laughs> Once again, you see the color changing the color, you know. Also, yeah, because ah, of the extension, change the color, you know. And yeah. I will put in here percent PDF dot one point one. Save again, and of course, continue to be a Python based on the extension. Okay. Yeah. But if I do, for example, PDF ID Senhor Segura, they are running like a PDF. See, because of the magic number. If I try to put in, for example, Python, syntax error, as it works. So if you see here, so we can manipulate, I'm not a malicious guy, but I can manipulate the file, the, the magic number. And now the tools, this tool, this command, this other command, PDF yeah. ID, let me go to the file. This, uh, th this is a great practice. So when you start, you want to analyze, investigate some file. First thing, understand its type. Is it really what it, uh, it looks like? Because maybe exactly. it looks like a PDF, but maybe it's an executable uh, Python uh, script, a malicious one. So that's I a have one. Hmm. Yeah, I have a super nice example. Usually I like to use in my class or my trainings. Okay. Here one. I basically, this is one of my the practices that I like to use. The okay. all uh, trainings, workshops, you know, courses that I used or I perform in some universities or whatever, I used always real malware. This is my practical. Okay? okay. So if you like, you can go here, for example, on the on the internet. You can go to my, for example, if you want my GitHub, for example. Okay. If you want. Philip 86, rejected. It's a simple like this. You can go Philip 86. You can go, it's more easier way. Okay. You can go to repository. Uh, to get the real malware uh, file to work on. Yeah. I, this is the four, it's not my project. It's the project from the community. Okay. The zoo, very known to the internet. You can see here the project. Okay. It's not mine. But yeah. I fork at this project just to be here to to put in the you know in in this in this place in in my to be more easier for my course. You can yeah. click here in hours, for example, and here you have the binaries and the source. Super nice because wow. of course the source is uh, uh, after the reverse engineering. Okay, wow. so here you can see many real hours, as you can see here, for example, Loki. Mamba, Petcha, yeah. ransomware, wanna cry, whatever. So, so, so not... Philippe, if I go back to what you said at the beginning, if I have the source and the binaries, I can do both static and dynamic analysis, right? Is it true what yeah. I said? Yeah. Actually, it, it, the statistic analysis is based on the commands that you can perform, like this that I'm doing here is is a, for example, if you check here in the another. Here I have many real mowers. I download this the bunch of the mowers. Okay. From actually, I can go below here. This is the mow real. This is the mower here. Yeah. Okay. This is this mower here. This this folder. Right. This is the that there's when you download this, you have more than one content. Okay. Yeah. This is you, you have this one, this one, this one. The statistic analysis, you will do some analysis in the code. 
In this specifically uh, repository on GitHub, you can see here Mowers, you can see the source. What that means that you can see the original and the reverse it. Uh -huh. But if you click here, you can see this three, four, six Mauer reverse it. Okay. And you can see here the original. Okay. Uh, you can see the code inside of the uh, the file. Yeah. So the statistic analysis will do some comments. You analyze this, but the dynamic analysis is different. I need to execute the malware. In this case, I'm not execute itself the malware. Yes. I'm do some comments and under, understand some results. Yes. But that's the difference. Okay. In the beginning, I explained this, but that's the difference. So the dynamic, I I need to execute itself. You know, I need to click put in the double click or I need to really like, for example, if I have some uh, shell script here, for example, I need to set here the shell script and so on and execute itself the model. Or if I have a Python script malicious, for example, I don't have any Python malicious here, but let's suppose that I have some malicious content. I will put in here the file, for example, a malware doc Python. And I, this is, is exactly the dynamic analysis. I need to execute the malware itself. Right. But if I'm not, if I don't have a, you know, a experience, for example, uh, and I don't have any tools to help me to bring the results, I just, when I do this command, I will just infect my machine. Okay. <laughs> because of that, you need to have this. When you think about the sandbox concept, you need to have any specifically engines inside of the the, the virtual machine like this, for example, let me go to the virus total has a mission of virus total. Okay. Okay. It's a website created for a Spanish security company, blah, 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 whatever. But just to explain for, uh, for the, the attendees. So, uh, you have the, you can upload the file, you can upload the URL, you can search for whatever. Let me go for here. I have here some, for example, I, I talk for you. This is a one of the executable, okay? I don't know if it's malicious or not. I can just type, for example, SHA-256, um, and um, is a sum, okay? And I can put here 199 doc executable, and I have here the hash, okay? Uh -huh. So I just, if you see here, I will just click copy, okay? And I will go to the virus total and I will put in here the search. I will click here in search and I can I can pass here URLs, IP address, domain, or file hash. In this case, it's file hash. I will, as you can see here, I will click, okay, I will click here, as you can see, enter. And this is a antivirus scanning based on many security engines inside of this virus total that you check if this hash is malicious or not so take a look at this result so 64 security vendors and no no send blocks flagged this file has a malicious but as you can see here so many security vendors like whatever name as yeah. you can see here define this hash Remember, this, yeah. this one, exactly, this one is a militia. And this one, other one, for example, UNP. I don't, I, I, I have no idea what that means in this case. For example, UNP. What does that mean? Take a look at this extension, man. What does that mean, UNP? You know, maybe you can try file UNP extension. If you don't know, you can type this way. Oh, it's, it's update notification pipeline. This is the, the meaning. You see, of course I know what, is, what that means, but if you don't know, this is the way. This is the research that you can do, okay? Yeah. The thing that you can type to understand exactly what that means. But this is the extension, okay? But when you perform this file, remember the file command? This is a, is a file, okay? And if you type here, sha two six two five six, sun again, and putting this executable there. This is another one. I will copy here, just to confirm you. Copy, and I will go to the virus total. I can 
delete and I will paste here and I will click enter and they will do analysis and they will do one specific analysis from this specifically. Oh man, it's a malicious too. Oh, malicious as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, and not only this, but here you can see the details. This is a kind of uh, antivirus scanning. Okay. Yeah. No antivirus. Yeah. It's online antivirus scanning. This is the whole information, as you can see, MD5, show one, different part of this, the sessions, and take a look at this different names of the file, what kind of compilers that they have, session, this is another conversation that you can do, that you can do kind of imports inside of this. And let me go to the beginning, a uh, community, I like this because here you can find some sometimes the, uh, the community can leave some comments or uh, view yeah okay. exactly and sometimes you have some sandbox uh testing like as i mentioned other kind of engines inside of this so cool. is a super super nice this is one of those and if you do like to test other malwares you can go for the malware bazaar mm -hmm. here yeah. Bazaar. And you can find here the bazaar.abus.ch. Okay. This is the Bauer data. This is a repository maintained for the community to provide difference. Here, as you can see, many real Mowers. Okay. And this is a super nice because if you go, for example, this one. The first one, for example, today, and you can see here the this is a kind of IOCs because it's an indicator of compromise. Okay, information you can find the uh, you know um, intelligence. This malware specifically uh, was uploaded from Hungary. Here, some threat entails information that you can. They are gathering data from this yeah. specifically informations or in, in companies and sometimes you can find some informations about the structure it's important to have some logging you just have an, a, a twitter account if you go for example for the browser once again and if you type here this is the syntax that you can use for example to find some files like md5 or whatever i will using for example um tag docs .ads. Let me check if it's correct here. Yeah, it's correct. Let me go to the beginning of this. Oh, they have more than one page. Yeah, take a look at this guy. Felipe Perez. Ah, I know yeah. this guy. Yeah, tough guy to get. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> take a look at this. Oh, this is the information. Okay. In Premiere, it's a kind of printing. Download PDF. You can download this PDF for you. You can test. Okay. And... Uh, how oh, many downloads of this file? Nice. <laughs> many people. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Take a look. This this is a detection from this specifically scanning. The search of the they they gathering now. The That's reversing right. ads yeah. is a is a malicious totally, as you can see here. And mm -hmm. not only uh, malicious, but as you can see here, they have and an the ability. Yeah, the CV. Yeah. yeah. They have an exploit. Exploit mm -hmm. inside of the PDF. This exploit can explore this vulnerability, basically. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they have more information, but I should be connected. But it's yeah. mine. This is yeah. one of the cool. I have here the the malware. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, let me return it to the, the 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 end of the presentations because I talk a lot about this. No, no, it's good. And... I think we we spoke about the file manipulation. Why it's important how to check the, the type file. And also, if we are suspecting some uh, file, we we don't want to uh, execute it because of, uh, the, uh, yeah, you know, never. concern, malicious concern. So we can uh, use the, the size, the browser, the databases you showed um, to check it for us. Yeah, exactly. So let me uh, go to the end of this conversation is uh, talk mm -hmm. about the physical logical structure of the PDF, okay? Usually the PDF has four parts, the header, the body, cross-reference table, and trailer. Okay, Philip, what does that mean, these four parts of PDF? Here is the key. 
the first part is the header. Mm -hmm. The body usually is the content, the, the whole, the bunch of content that you have inside of the body, one, two, three pages, whatever, how many uh, the PDF has. Cross-reference table is one of the keys, is the locations of the objects, Ethan, the file for yeah. random access, okay? And the other one is trailer, is a location of the certain object. It means that here you can, if you see here, we have objects, objects, and objects. What right. does that mean? That means that the PDF has many objects, okay? And all the all uh, objects to have inside of PDF, they are there are you know uh, content, and they are referring each one of this uh, body or no body this object. Let me go to the our virtual machine here to explain more in details, because let me go here the PDF. Remember we have here many PDFs like I have a bill, I have an invoice PDF. Resume, simple, and you know, for it's not PDF. So mm -hmm. if I type here PDF ID and I put here, for example, view ID, okay, take a look at this. So mm. this PDF has 44 objects, mm -hmm. okay? So 44 objects and end of the object. They have eight stream and eight and stream they have a two cross reference table and two trailers okay so the if you see here so each pdf has many objects and there and these objects are connected in each other okay so if i am go to another one here let me go to the for example pdf id they call for for example let me compare here let us compare here. So this one is 44. This one has 80. Okay. This is, is less than another. But right. on the other hand, this one has a 16 stream. Double stream. Yeah. yeah. So many streams. What that means, Philip, basically? So if I go, for example, here, PDF, PDF, TK, okay, PDF, TK. PDFTK is um let me close this one here. PDFTK is in a specifically tools that you can use. PDFTK dash dash help is a nice tool that you can use in to perform something here. Like uh, basically PDFTK you can use it, for example, for um let me let me help pipe less. Because I will read the, the this help for the beginning because the buffer of the the, the, the my terminator is, is is small. Just me go to the beginning here. Here is the description. Yeah, PDF TK basically he explain what is exactly uh, the PDF is electronic paper. PDF TK is electronic uh, staple remover or you know punch binder secret decoder rings and other things like this. What you can do with this comment. You can merge PDF mm -hmm. documents. You can split PDF pages, and take a look. At this you can uncompress and decompress. Wow, page. Page. because mm -hmm. streams are kind of pages that you can put inside of the PDF. You know, you can compress and you can put in inside of this. So yeah. if you go again to the PDF ID, to tour, file. Take a look at this. We have a 16 page streams. Right. It's a, it's a many. So if you go here for the Thor file, they have exactly one page, actually. And not only this, but in this case, these tools, they didn't identify any pages here, like a zero, not a one page. But if you type here, take a look at this. Is one only page. This is the tour. Uh -huh. Philip, you are executing. You are executing the Maurer machine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But in this case, I know was this is not a Linux Maurer. This is from Windows. So I'm, you know, executing in the Linux. So nothing happened now. Yeah, because I, okay, because the system operation is different in my case. Yeah.
And this is another one, resume, for example. This is in Portuguese language. Here's in Portuguese language, but here is Spanish. So uh, uh -huh. this OID was blocked because of the security reasons. Okay. I'm right. translating for you. So, uh, so we starting um, changing from the your IP, uh, IP uh, ID. Uh, oh, again in Portuguese here. <laughs> Uh, your IP ID was automatically blocked to save you, uh, and you cannot start your session for any Apple service. So the basically this, but something are happening here. You know, this is the resume as you can see here. It is a resume doc PDF, okay? And um, hmm. sample PDF, yeah. coronavirus, whatever. And if you see here, you have uh, some. Uh, redirection here, as you can see. So yeah. each PDF has a, a different behavior. So that's the key. So, but the structure of the PDF is important to understand that they work as a tree, okay? Usually they have one, it's a big father and behind yeah. of this big father, they have more than one child of different mm -hmm. children. Okay. So if I type here, for example, PDF, uh, parser is another tool from the DA Stevens. I can put in here, for example, dash uh, W. It's a raw data. And uh, I put in for, for example, pipe less, just to start it to the beginning. Okay. And I type enter here. This is the big father of that tool. Mm. Okay. Sick. If you see the tree architecture behind of the big father, you have uh, this first child, second child. Third yeah. child and so on yeah. and so on. Okay. Yes, and so on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If you go, for example, for another one, like for example, a bill, let me check here. The big father is object one, is different. You yeah. see? I see. If I go to resume, let me go for this one. Let's check the big father. Object one. Yeah. So it depends on the model, you, yeah. you the, the, yeah. the PDF, okay? So, but that's the structure when you talk about this specifically reference. And that's the key. So just to finalize here, I like to put in here PDF ID to mention it to you. They have some many informations and uh, based on this as a slash, for example, is a part of the content inside of the strings, inside of this, the bunch of the objects, okay? And you have a page encrypted. So each one of these has one specific meaning. Okay. And uh, if you would like to know, you can go, for example, to the TDA Stevens, if you correctly, blog post. Uh, yeah, this one here, you can click here, TJ Stevens. And they have here a PDF tools. PDF tools. You can click here below, PDF tools. Here you can see the fundamentals of the elements. Maybe it's a good way to explain here the trick. Yes, better Three. to understand. Yeah. If you don't understand my explanation, sorry for that. This is the tree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hierarchical structure of the PDF. Okay. So object one, big father, object two, referring. This is the structure. This is the simple definition. Here you can see the structure, what kind of position of the bytes more technical things, but here is the example. This In this case, for example, as you can see here, the object seven is a big one. Yes, yes. So that's and the we, key. We, the idea is without opening uh, the file, you can understand its structure. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because based on that, the structure, you can see or you can try figure out where you can find malicious content of PDF. Okay, and yeah. if you go here, take a look at this, the open actions, open action. Okay, if you, I don't know what that means, open action. Okay, let me see here if indicate and automatically, automatic actions to be performed when the page and the document is viewed. Yeah. All malicious PDF documents with JavaScript I've been seen in the wild had an automatic actions to launch the JavaScript without user interaction. Uh, so wow. Yeah. Wow. 
wow, PDF yeah. with open actions is a mower <clears throat> because I don't imagine any reason to be this. Yeah, in a yeah, way. yeah. Makes sense to you? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to to ask you that, but yeah, yeah. You said it indeed. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, that's the key here. So take a look at this one. This mower because now we know that's mower because yeah. they have one open action. Open action. Yeah. That's yeah. the key. Where is this open action? We should figure out if this open action is inside of the what kind of object and if is inside of the what kind of streaming. I yeah. can do some comments to analyze each one. For yeah. example, uh, if I put in here PDF parser once again, uh, dash help, dash dash help. And uh, like let's, yeah, if this program not be tested, here is the versions and I put in dash W, remember? So yeah. the raw output is for date and filters. Yeah. And I can set many others comments. So if I go to the PDF parser. Yeah. Dash parser. Uh, dash W. Door. Dash PDF. Five oh. less. Okay. Take a look at this. This is, this is the big one. Object one. Object two. Pages. Uh Open, oh, take a look at this. Yes. Open action. And this is the reference. The seven. Object yeah. seven. We should go for the object seven, object 12. And take a look at this. Inside of the object 12, we have a streaming. Remember the page streaming? Right. right. It's a compressor. So right. here we have a semi content compressor, this object. But the left is a small. Maybe it's not a real malicious content. We should decode this information inside of this. This is when you have this kind of flat decode, we should decode. Okay. In object 13, we have another string, same size, object 14, 14, 15, and 16, 17, 18. And usually, as you can see here, the streaming are increasing, but it's still small. Yes, yes, I see. We should find, we should find the object seven, remember? It's here, referring, uh -huh. but it's compressed. Uh, that's why you cannot see it, yeah. Exactly, it's compressed. You see, when you understand the structure of the PDF, mm. and, and take a look, this is interesting, because this is the second time that I see this object, this PDF. I like this. Usually when I do some some <laughs> tasks like this, I download the mower and I, I like to record like this. Or when I do this, oh. I like to do this in LinkedIn Live. I don't know what appears for right. us. Right. So I, I just I know that it's malicious because I download from the our um the repository. Okay. <clears throat> so the open actions in object seven and they are inside of the one of this specifically object stream compressor okay so let let's go for the end of the presentation so this is the the, the pdf that i received and uh, i will do now the complete i just explained the whole concepts and now i will perform this specifically mm. in this pdf so i received the cv as you can see here okay yeah. <clears throat> the version i i type file as i explained in the in the, this conversation they have 15 objects as you can see here yeah and two streamings, right? Yes. So it's more easy because it's just only two. And yeah. take a look at this. Five yeah. reference. Yeah. And, and open one. Action. Yeah. You see all those things. Which we already action. know now it's a malicious. So yeah. yeah. It's totally malicious. So uh, now I will do the PDF parser. As you can see, I like to use in this. I will type, first of all, the dash S to search the streams for. yeah yeah so i type here that's ash remember javascript is to us a uh, three reference okay right. object one one reference object seven the second one and the third is the object 12 right so three references and we have two reference of the js 
object 12 and object object one yeah totally connected you see yeah yeah just to confirm that i'm using two different tools to bring us same result you know that's the key why i do this because i know how the structure works and understand how the structure works i can using tools because remember if the attacker manipulates something and i using tools in a better way i cannot find the good results that's the key i need to understand a bunch of things so right. now i will type the dash w to see the raw data and filters as i, I showed in another malware so take a look at this the big father object one okay the root referring this six child Right. And take a look at this. What is the open actions? Open action is this. And the open actions is connected with why? It 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 is connected Java. with who? Yeah. Yes. That is so remember of the open the open actions here. Yeah. 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 Automatic action. So as we can see here, so something something will happen after the pdf is opened right so now we need to figure out where is the place where we can find this content this javascript right object for another this is another father object for because they referring to another child here yes you see i see nine and uh, yeah, eight. exactly another father object seven it's a yeah. big family <laughs> it's okay it's not too big because they're just 15 you know but <laughs> You can see another with the 66, 66, you know, too, too big. And uh, another refer reference here, as you can see. So the four referring nine in the nine, you're referring four because it's a family, okay? Object 10, we can see the content of the, not the content, the part of the JavaScript, but the referring 12. Here right. is the first streaming. Remember, we have two streaming here in this case. Right. This code is small, but the object 12 referring 13 and take a look here we have the javascript and the left is big yes yes so yes here yes. Is, is the content yes so we find the 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 content or i supposing i'm supposing actually that the content is in this extreme because uh we should investigate this one because if we go to the object, for example, 14, we don't have any other reference. And if you go to the end of the object, 12 is, is, a, is a different. So remember, we use, I explain about PDF TK, TK remember? Yes, if, yes. If streaming is, is in the object 13, we should decompress this, this streaming page, remember? Right. And this is the tool that I can use to uncompress. So yes. now I will do this comment here to uncompress the streaming pages because I mean, yeah, the, the malicious or the JavaScript, the possible JavaScript maybe can be in the object 13 as we saw or as we are seeing here. So yeah. I set here PDF TK, the, here the PDF, the output, I request the output. To copy and paste in this in this specific file, and I set the flag uncompress. So as you can see, now we have the whole content inside of the PDF uncompressed. And take a look. This is the JavaScript. Yeah. Nice, super nice. So, but this is one of the the first technique used by the attacker. So this is the JavaScript obfuscated. So now we should disobfuscate this code. This is the fact, first technique used by the attacker. So I copy and paste, as you can see here, I copy and paste here. And of course, I analyze the content inside of this. And I saw here some evil parameters here. Okay. This is the beginning of the evil parameter. They set here evil, you know, a parenthesis here A. And this is A is here, is equal to the whole content here. And here's in EDN. So yeah. I thought when I made this investigation, JavaScript, JavaScript is application. Applications sometimes use an HTML. If I use an HTML, I can try to print this information using a specific browser. Okay. 
So mm -hmm. I put in here document right to write this information. I saw here inside of the parentheses, as you can see here, letters, numbers, and percent, very common behavior. Was this not behavior, kind of standard, you know? So I thought maybe some things are happening here. So I save, I rewrite the document, as you can see here. Okay. I set the HTML. I give the permission to execute this file in my browser. And I will now execute them this this new art, this new file in my web browser. Let's see what happened now inside of the JavaScript obfuscated. I disobfuscated, and when I print here, take a look what we found. Hmm. <sighs> payload. <laughs> a payload. Yeah. If you don't know what is a payload, payload is a content with responsible. Let's suppose that I'm um a Victor machine. And you is a attacker server or command and control. So this is a payload. Okay. So this is an exploit. So we discover a specific vulnerability. Yeah. And we should we should download the code the code malicious inside of the Victor machine. The payload the payload basically is the content inside of this. I mean, you know, this is an example. Okay, guys. Yes. Yeah. Inside of this is a code that I will put here, bang, okay, in the Victor machine. So that's the key. The payload is a code that you download in the Victor machine, and this code will be responsible for the connection reverse with the attacker. Yeah. Okay. So let's think in the flow. So the user received the PDF. Inside of the PDF has a JavaScript. This JavaScript is obfuscated because inside of this has a payload. This payload, when the user open or when the user view the PDF, the PDF will perform automatically action. Remember, open right. action inside of the victim, and they will download the payload in the victim machine. And this payload will be responsible for connecting reverse with the attacker. So here is the payload. Yeah. So after that, I copy and paste this code. As you can see here, this is just to compare. I made this investigation using Unix platform, Linux, and I use Windows to explain oh. both both uh, possibility. Okay. And if you see here, I'm using the Mozilla tool. Okay. This is another tool. I copy and paste this uh, payload, yeah. as you can see here. I delete the end of the part and I convert because the attacker using here the U. Uh, UCS2 is an old technique because the evolution called UTF-16, okay? Yeah. But basically, they uh, I convert to to this this UCS to two hexadecimal, as you can see here. When mm -hmm. I type here, when I press here, they convert the code in hexadecimal, as you can see here, the results. After that, I delete the, the end of the part. Here, I have the hexadecimal information and I generate here the file and this file will be then generate a binary a binary file and I call very creative CNC binary <laughs> <laughs> and after that I using another two if you see here DJ Steven suite in the, in that website here let me go they have here a suite of the tools some topics some tools uh, you can download the bunch of the tools that i'm using in unix platform is embedded already okay but for the windows you can download the the package like i made here and you can perform the same test that i made here because yeah. of that you can find my mower in the mower bazaar okay so i type here the store to search https http sorry http and i found here the IP address Perfect. for the attacker. So remember the payload will nice. connect it with this machine. If I go to here, cross your fingers. I hope that is not your country. <laughs> it's from Estonia. Oh. This. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And if you go to the end of this analysis here of the community, if you see here, what kind of URLs associated, okay? 
and some details. If you see here, the information to the internet is associated to a specifically uh, PDF attack, specifically yeah. reader, reader. And uh, if you re go, I think here, yeah. If you go, no, Mauer Bazaar, yeah. If you go here, this is the Mauer. This is the PDF that I'm showing you now. And if you go here, they are linked with this specifically vulnerability, okay? Yeah. So if you go, for example, uh, CVID dash eight dash, let me go to 2992. Yeah. Two. This is a totally associated to Adobe update. Okay. I see. Adobe Acrobat. Yeah. One of the most famous yeah. vulnerabilities. Exactly. So this is the vulnerability. Okay. Associated with the malware. Yeah. So this malware is associated with this vulnerability. Is about update of the Adobe, if you remember correctly. Yeah. So, right. and that's the key. So yeah, now I finish the presentation and uh, or the conversation. I just would like to um, share this specifically QR code because it's a specifically project that I'm working now. And uh, I'm, I'm asking, I'm requesting uh, the community helping actually, because we are creating a, a cloud security project now and it's totally free. Is uh, we are requesting beta tester. I'm writing now articles, recording videos, explaining how the tool works. They will oh, discover cool. for possible vulnerabilities in the cloud, and uh, we publishing some specifically uh, newspapers about this project. It's a super nice. It's free, uh, and after the the people trying connecting with the AWS or GCP or Azure, and I will call for. 20, 30 minutes to call feedbacks, okay? Just invite you, the community, to participate with that with me. And this is my contact, and that's it for my part. Very interesting. Definitely, I learned uh, a lot. And you guys, if you liked it and you want to hear more, one, follow this guy. And second, if you want to see more uh, videos between me and Filippi, please, let leave your comments uh, in the description of the video yeah. and we'll set another uh, session, definitely. But thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Filippi. It was very interesting. Uh, and I'm sure the audience will uh, learn a lot.